Hey everybody and welcome back to Beyond the Trailer Park. And I'd just like to point out that this week is episode 169. So break out your high school jokes now. <laughs> and oh hi Tress. See you over in the chat room there. Uh, well, this would be a good week for some trolls, I think, but we'll see who shows up. Anyway, um joining us again from the wilds of Pennsylvania. Good evening, Beth. Good evening. And from the equally wild and strange Mississippi, good evening, Miss Morgan. Good evening. Excellent. No more no more hurricanes or anything. We we have the tornado up here now, apparently. I saw that tornado. It was absolutely wild, especially that nobody was killed, I saw. Yes. Well, and the weird thing is like that's re that's five and a half hours north of me. That's which is way... not common. That's very rare, isn't it? To have because I've never heard of tornadoes being a problem, really. I mean, oh. north of I would say Nebraska, really. Yeah, no, like because we're we we're in the pointy bit that sticks down into mm -hmm. America. Um, we have had some nasty tornadoes, but they're still few and far between. So up north, like that is crazy. But even more crazy, there was a drive-by shooting two blocks from my house. What? Do y'all have gangs? Like, is somebody like, I'm with the Moose Gang? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we we actually have had issues with um, Vietnamese and, uh, yeah, I think Cambodian and, like, Chinese gangs, but not in the city oh. so much here. But we, they said it was a targeted hit. Ooh, so, maybe somebody owed the money. I don't know. Unfortunately, the That's victim better. was the victim was like some twenty year old kid, of course. But the, and and the uh, the perps were in a white Mercedes. Ooh, yeah, it sounds like somebody owed the money or something, which is yeah. like. That's the thing. If you like live in cities, it's like that and live in bad areas, particularly when I lived in Jackson, it was just like, just mind your business. And most of the time, yeah, you'll be fine. I mean, occasionally, you know, what would happen is a stray bullet would go off and it would hit somebody who wasn't intended. But and I mean, yeah, there's still no excuse for it. But still, like, just mind your business and just kind of keep to your own. Yeah, I just this was like in the middle of the main street of and like yeah, it's still scary yeah. oh it was that bullet could have hit somebody else on accident oh, like or exactly, exactly. Hit, like they've killed kids like in chicago it's a you know it happens a lot where like people just spray a house and it'll end up killing a bunch of people and mm -hmm. yeah it's a, it's a problem I live in the city when i used to live in buffalo i lived right on the cusp well i lived on the west side at one point which was getting pretty bad but <clears throat> where I lived before I left uh, Buffalo altogether was right on that line. And we used to have two crack houses on the corners. And, you know, a lot of homeless would drown. And around the corner, there was a, a guy got killed over a parking spot. His roommate stabbed him with a knife or parasitism. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm kind of used to that. So when I first moved to Emporium, which almost 20 years ago now, the first time I heard a gunshot, because this is a big, huge hunting area, I hit the floor. Mm. And my partner's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I heard a bullet or I heard a gunshot. And I said, see, where I'm from, if you hear a gunshot, you hit the floor. Yeah. Because you don't know, because, you know, it's stray bullets and, you know, the neighborhood I lived in, it was, you know, when I lived in the city was not the greatest. It wasn't the worst. There were worse parts of Buffalo to live in. But it's like you hit the you hit the duck and she just thought it was the funniest thing. Because, and it took me months to get used to the fact that there's hunters. There I mean, here. I, yeah. I'm well, in a valley, so it, it's like you don't know. Scary thing about this too, though, is um, the the street in front of our house is completely tore up, and there's giant like bulldozers and diggers and all that shit out here. And so 
I never heard a thing. I mean, two blocks away, I probably, if especially if I had been near a window or something, I probably would have heard it, but it was too damn noisy. And so get this, the Mercedes took off on a high-speed chase down towards Toronto on the 401, which is one of the busiest highways on the planet. <laughs> And they caused uh, an accident um, because they got off the 401 um, towards Hamilton, or no, sorry, towards Guelph. And then they got back on the 401. But in that time they were off the 401, they caused one of the police SUVs to crash with some poor bastard's pickup truck. And... So, so the Mercedes never got in an accident, but they caused the cops to get in an accident with somebody else. And Damn. they were last, they were last seen in Mississauga somewhere. But I was thinking, cause our street that's being tore up right now is one of the main thoroughfares in the city. Like it's a four lane street and it's, there's only one lane in one direction open right now. And I thought, fuck what if those bastards had come shooting down a side street this direction and ended up in the construction zone and decided they were just going to take everybody out you know well and and that's not that's not a crazy fear i mean it's not <laughs> it, it's like i mean where i'm at now crime wise is is very very mild um yeah it's like drunks and people yeah i mean yeah we get the occasional speed we we do have a drug issue here an opium problem who doesn't in the united states um but it's like com even compared to where where i grew up as a child it was really mild but when i went back for mom's funeral i drove uh went through the old neighborhood my dad kind of sort of lives in the old neighborhood but not quite he actually now lives next door to my old high school they oh, wow. the elementary school they tore it down and built a, a retirement high rise and it's really nice but it's just so funny it's next to my high school and but even now like when i went back from mom's funeral like the changes i mean you can see it's as much as i hate to say it it's really becoming bad because you know, people are getting desperate. Yeah. You know, financially, you know, uh, economically. I mean, it's just, it's really beginning to show that divide between the haves and the have nots. It and, is. I mean, I grew up in a straight middle class, hardcore middle class, blue collar neighborhood, and it's, it's slowly going down. Mm. And it's not for lack of trying. Well, I live in the, the, what I guess you would call the more sketchy part of town anyway. And it's like, I moved down here in, to this part of town in 95 and it's like a hundred times better than it was when I moved here. Like when I used to, I used to work about a block from where I, I live now about six blocks from where I used to live. And I worked about a block from there. So I used to walk to work at, and I always worked afternoons. So I was always coming home after midnight and the corner where I had to cross the street on the main street was where all of the um, sex workers worked. And so I would stop to cross the street and they all give me dirty look. And I'm like, no, 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 ladies, I'm, I'm done working for the night. It's okay. No worries. And one of them, um, there, like uh, we had underground parking for management, and so you would come out like the back of the building and come up like a alley kind of thing uh, to get to the main street. And one of the managers was leaving, and he was stopped waiting to turn on to the main street. And one of the girls just jumped in his car with him, and he was uh -uh. like, he was like, no, no, out. <laughs> Well, I, I think, but it's like way better now. Yeah. It, it's sad because, like, e even when I was growing up and uh, up until when I when I left twenty years ago, it's like there was a section of the city of Buffalo that I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember the Watts riots that 
primarily took place in Detroit, but it did hit cities like LA and Detroit and um, Buffalo. Was that, was that after? Um, it was like sixty-eight through seventy-four. Oh, okay, I I was born in seventy-two, girl. So, oh, and, shit. and Morgan Morgan never saw the seventies. <laughs> Okay. No, but I hear they yeah. were wild. They kind of were. Even when you were five, the 70s were kind of wild. I mean, the stuff we used to do. Whoa. But anyway, like My dad said that the 70s were an embarrassing decade and everyone should forget they ever happened. <laughs> well, they should forget a lot of the clothing, that's for sure. I Definitely. wouldn't say forget it ever happened. I actually from my odd perspective of being a fundamentalist found them kind of fascinating but okay you can leave the drugs in as Deb said the fashion but then again I'm I'm the type that will wear polka dots okay I remember my aunt having a a multicolor like almost rainbow plaid polyester bell bottom jumpsuit Lord, that's a, there was a lot going on there, but no, yeah, I, I think it was just like I'm obsessed with that. The 70s as a decade, but yeah, I can definitely see where my dad's coming from. Is I think he was more coming from like the clothing and the hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. let, let me give you a pictorial, and, and, and I'm using this as an example because this is a perfect example. You know the picture of Colin. Uh, uh, Oh, what the fuck? The football player. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick? Thank you. Yes. You know the picture where he's got his fro out to here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was me. Oh, girl. That was my hair back in the day. I had oh. very wild, my hair like is really thin now, but, and short, but, and, and <laughs> my, if, if I wanted, my hair would look exactly like Collins. Oh, true. Nothing wrong in that that picture. I mean, I, I actually kind of like his hair like that. I think it's kind of cute. Yeah. Me. But it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I I have the fashion sense of of the seventies because I'm the type that will wear polka dots with plaid. I don't care if it's comfortable. Yeah. I'm wearing it. I don't give a fuck what it well, looks like. Tris says for for first one, I wasn't born yet, but I do remember hearing about the Watts riot. And then they said, "OMG, that's the entire seventies in one outfit." It was horrible, Tris. Let me tell you, I I, I vaguely remember it at the time, but we have pictures. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Tris also said, uh, "I love this." Uh, Welcome to the Fallen Gong Show. There we go. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> and, and, and speaking of the 70s, that was the height of the gong show, which I watched all the time when I was a kid. Yes. yes. But anyway, so we we, uh, we we could talk about the 70s all night, but uh, we, we did have a topic. So, uh, yeah, Falun Gong. So, I don't know. Had you guys heard of them much before I started talking about them, or is they relatively? I, I, for me, I've heard of them. I had some misconceptions, and strangely enough, I realized just now that some of my misperceptions were based on uh, China propaganda. Propaganda. Yep. And, and we'll get to like, that. Wow. Okay, but. Yeah, it was one of those uh, fringe groups that caught my eye, but I never delved into them. Yeah, Morgan, do you I never heard you? anything. I this was a whole new. Like I didn't even know how to spell the group. Like I was saying earlier, I thought it was spelled F A L L E N and then Gong. So I thought it was like a gong that fell down. I did not. It, it's actually spelled F A L U N, and it took me like ten minutes because I was like, "No, fallen gong." I know what I'm looking for, not this F A L U N. And then I was like, "Oh, maybe that is it. Maybe I am wrong." And Google was trying to steer me on the right path, but you know, I'll just let Google do that. And yeah, always so listen it's, yeah, to F -A -L -U -N. Google. <laughs> Always listen to the Google, but yeah, I got some very weird search um, s search suggestions, you know, as you're typing into Google and you're like, or whatever, and then it gives you like some really crazy um, suggestions. Most of them have to do yeah. with like 
pregnancy or whatever. But no, like when I typed in Fallen Gong, it was like Fallen Gong organ harvesting. And I was just yeah. like, oh, yeah, we'll get to that. Where too. is that going to take me? And I oh, was like, yeah. this is a wild ride. So I'd heard about them years ago. And in the context of evil China is persecuting these these um peaceful nice people and it, they're being thrown into re-education camps and and yes they talk about forcibly taking organs out of them and things like that and i just thought okay well big meanie communist country with uh dictatorship blah 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 of course they're gonna persecute the nice um innocent people and i just thought you know they were a benign little group and i never thought much about them until um oh about five or six years ago we um they have a multicultural festival every summer in kitchener here and we 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 haven't gone in two or three years but we we have gone off and on over the years and one year we went there was a bunch of following gong people um with a, a stand and and some signage and whatnot and they were just doing their exercises which look very very much like tai chi it is well it is it is a it, variant it yeah it's a variant so i'm like what on earth could these people do that would make china like totally persecute them because they're the the religion for lack of it they call it um a, a practice i guess or a cultivation is their terminology um but why would they think of this as such a threat so i didn't think much of it at all and when i first got on twitter which was summer of 2013 i think around there um the first few months i was on twitter um uh, one day this guy started to um tweet at me and he was targeting a whole bunch of atheists and he was being kind of verbally abusive and you know me i love a challenge and i'll i'll debate any moron that i come across so i go after this guy because he was being a total dick to people well turns out that he was an american follower of fallen gong and so he starts spouting all of this weird shit and telling me these crazy things like um he he was going to be able to um talk to the dead and he was going to get x-ray vision and all this shit and i was like i i thought he said he could talk to the dead so i'm like oh really well what did they tell you and he's oh well i'm not there yet <laughs> kind of thing but that was where i was like what in the hell so i started sort of looking into this a little bit and I got to tell you, I don't know what's crazier, Scientology or Falun Gong, because they're both fucked in. Fucking well, I, I think it's funny you use that, that analogy to Scientology, because uh, one of the few articles, and I'm woefully unprepared for tonight, I will admit that, um, actually compared it to Scientology, and it's like, and I saw that in the other article, and so they, they have some really... I'll say woo-woo beliefs, but oh yeah, I know my initial uh, introduction to Fulan Gong was, as I said, it was, uh, a lot of my misperceptions, and I'm not saying they're good or bad either way, but were based on what was being pushed out by the state, i.e. China. And yes. I mean, yeah, I'm against religion. I mean, I, I'm an anti-theist. I'm also anti-religion. But I'm also a realist, realizing that religion is not going to go anywhere. So, you know, as I, I've stated numerous times this week in Crazy Group, that I don't give a flying fuck what you believe, as long as you keep it in the privacy of your own home. I only have an issue when it becomes part of public policy. And that's how I always I approach it with any cult uh, or cult-like um 
organization is I don't really care what you believe. Just keep it to yourself. Yeah. And that's kind of the attitude I had, but the, the little bit of reading that I have done, um, in fact, I've, you mentioned it even before, I, it was based on the wiki article and nothing against yes. Wikipedia. I find them for a initial resource. Yeah, they're, they're a good starting point. Yeah. For a starting point to get an introduction into a topic, they're, they're a good place to start. So that's where I started. And I found it kind of, even from what little I read, very biased towards Fulan Gong because they were like, oh, it's, you know, it's based in Buddhism and Taoism and, and it has the uh, uh, Tai Chi aspect to it, uh, or as I say, Tai Chi on steroids. Um, you know, yada, yada. And it was like, and, and, you know, they're being persecuted by the state government and yada, yada, yada. But underneath that, just a little bit that Deb has said, they have some really whacked out woo woo beliefs that well, yeah. it's like, okay, so who's right and who's wrong? You know, is the well, state government right in persecuting them? This guy I talked to, uh, now I take him with a grain of salt, too, because I don't think your average Falun Gong person thinks that being abusive to atheists is a good thing. But he was under the impression that this was how he was supposed to do his, quote, cultivation. So that was a bit odd. I, I find that interesting, though, because how long ago was that dub? uh four years ago ish i i just find it interesting and in not you know coming from the full on gong aspect but as far as being abusive towards atheists as far as proselytizing go i have found in a lot of uh well crazy group primarily but i also in some other groups very similar to and they actually believe and these aren't full and gong. These are basically Christians or some, in some cases, is uh, Muslims. Um, few uh, Hindu thrown thrown in there for uh, good measure. They find that in order to proselytize properly to atheists, they have to be abusive. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that that could come from it too. I'm not sure, but um, what I found interesting and why I kind of took what he said with a grain of salt is uh, another Falun Gong member started tweeting at him, chastising him for how he was acting towards other people. And he was like, oh, this is this is how my cultivation supposed to be. And you like he was an arrogant fucker, like no, no ifs, ands about it. He, he was basically saying you don't know what my path is and i'm supposed to do it this way and i'm going to achieve bigger things this way and blah blah okay. blah so question for you and yes. we're gonna pipe in if you as well you keep on mentioning the word cultivation yes what are the basic beliefs of fulangang i'm glad you asked so i have here um this is um, Falun da now they, there's a two terms there's Falun Gong and Falun Dafa D-A-F-A and I've seen from several sources that these are interchangeable they mean the same thing um, Falun Gong is the um, more um, common usage but they themselves seem to prefer Falun Dafa but this is falundafa.org and they have a, a brief introduction to Falun Dafa. So it says that it is an advanced practice of Buddha school self-cultivation. Founded by Mr. Li Hongzhu, the practice's master. Um, it is a discipline in which, quote, assimilation to the highest qualities of the universe uh, truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance is the foundation of the practice. It is guided in these supreme qualities and based on the very laws which underlie the development of the cosmos. Whatever the hell that means. <laughs> well, yeah, I was like, that told me nothing. That that's straight that's straight out of Deepak Chopra, man. Yeah. But, but yeah, I saw it was like 
part of this big boom in the late eighties that was very attractive, particularly to Chinese um, yes. elderly and people in the urban areas. Um, the sort of qigong, which is um, basically it's part of meditation and these yes. tai chi exercises, which are you know very popular, and you'll even see them yep. kind of parodied in movies and things like that. You know, the old people outside doing their like yoga and everything, yep. and um, or it's very similar to yoga in that way, but yeah, so I saw where this one, though, kind of was different because it also had these spiritual teachings attached to it, whereas the other ones were more about the exercise and getting, you know, fit and healthy and meditation and all that stuff. And I found a interesting article. Um, I think this is from SF Gate um, out of San Francisco. And there's different um, people who say, yeah, it is more of a cult. And it, this is a um, Berkeley psychologist and somebody who specializes in like crusading against these authoritarian kind of cults. And I saw this interesting thing where um, they did interview a woman, Gail Rashlin, a Falun Gong member, and she was a publicist in New York. And she said she couldn't believe anybody was alleging that Master Lee, who's the founder, exerts undue control over the lives of his devotees. And she said 99% of them have never met him. People come and go as they please, and they are never asked to donate money. Ray Rashlin also denied that Lee discourages his followers from seeking medical care. She said, it's a personal choice. Before I started the practice, I was taking sleeping pills and medication for depression. Now I don't need it. Um, while parents may notice a change in the behavior of their children after they join Falun Gong, Rashlin says she hasn't heard any complaints about it. It allows you to be more at peace. You upgrade your thinking and have compassion in your heart. She said, nobody's acting strange. That's not allowed. So a lot to unpack there, but yeah, the thing where we were talking about the behavior of the children changing was a lot of times like the children, when they became, you know, more involved, they would just start spouting off this weird jargon to their parents and stuff like that. And it was basically like this whole don't think. And then there's also, they have a, they talk about aliens that are going to take over the world. But then Master Lee kind of backed off of that and said, oh, well, those are a metaphor for these ancient Buddhist teachings and yeah. apparently his really really weird texts they have not even been translated into english so um yeah. there's that yeah. so it's like who knows yeah they, it is really they say it's really really weird ones and also it, apparently the ones that have been translated to english they've been tra they're translated i don't know if it's just because of the language differences or if this is on purpose but they're less um weird and bizarre than they are in the original it's, Chinese. Well, now the this um, falundafa.org they have PDFs of a lot of the publications that are available. So um, if anybody's curious, you can take a look there. Now the guy that I talked to, he told me some crazy ass shit. So he told me that the um, well, first of all, to put it in context, so Li Hongzhu. He he started um, Falun Gong in 92. So this is really, really new. Yet the guy I talked to told me that the um, originators of the practice um, started it thousands of years ago and they're still alive but they're disgusted with how the world is today so they hide themselves away from the world because they don't want to they don't like it this so. is interesting because i know I, i'm wondering if that is part of the quote state propaganda to maybe undermine them a bit well but this guy was a member well no what i'm saying is initially some say that uh, not Fulong Gong per se, but the practices underneath Fulong Gong actually started with the state government and the founder of Fulong Gong kind of went with it and then the government tried to make it as part of how traditional Chinese medicine is so ancient, this whole undermining of uh, making Chinese medicine become more mainstream yeah 
Well, let's um, we've we've got some more um, details from their site here. So it says um, the focus of Falun Dafa practice is the mind with the cultivation of one's mind and thoughts or Xin Xing. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly wrong. My my uh, apologies to um, Chinese folks. I don't even know if that's Mandarin or Cantonese, but um, it's X I N X I N G is being singled out as the key to increasing gong energy. The height of a person's gong is directly proportionate <laughs> to his shin shing. The concept. That sounds so dirty. You notice how Shin Shing sounds a little bit like Dingaling? <laughs> but yeah, I, but it's like in proportion to it, and it's like. Yeah. So the concept of Shin Shing encompasses the transformation of virtue, a white form of matter, and karma, a black form of matter. It also includes forbearance, discernment, and abandonment. That is, forsaking ordinary human desires and attachments and managing to endure the most trying of ordeals. Much is encompassed by the concept. And then, oh, and this, this part makes me laugh. Fallen Dafa also includes the cultivation of the body, which is accomplished by performing specific exercises. One purpose of the exercises is to strengthen the practitioner's supernatural abilities and energy mechanisms by means of his or her powerful gong force. May the force be with you. <laughs> yeah, and I saw when you mentioned the karma, um, I did read in the... Um, I tried to get a basic kind of understanding of a Wikipedia article, but it didn't go into like them being um, called a cult, except for like, you know, the persecution by the Chinese government. But it did say that they um, very much, they believe that, you know, you should relinquish pursuits of fame, money, and it's sort of sentimentality, which, you know, are kind of familiar if you're um, from Buddhism and, you know, even kind of Christianity in some sense. But also, it's a, they um, believe that any sex outside of monogamous heterosexual marriage builds up that black matter karma. And they, yeah, they don't believe in it. And even though they say gays and lesbians do practice it, but they consider it incompatible with their beliefs. Of course. Oh, it gets better. It says another purpose for the exercises is to develop many living entities in the practitioner's body. Now, where have we heard that before? Thetan, 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 thetan. How do you say Thetan in Chinese? <laughs> no idea. No. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I guess Tim Robertson must be listening because Tris says Tim Robertson's Facebook right now thinking uh, gong size related to Xin Shang sounds. Se oh no, that's what he would say. Sounds sexual to me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to suggest <laughs> that's that. Yeah. That's a Tim. We'll, we'll have to suggest that. Um, yeah. So yeah, living entities in the practitioner's body in advanced practice the immortal infant will come into being and many abilities will be developed. The exercise of Falun Dafa are the exercises of Falun Dafa are necessary for the transformation and cultivation of such things. A comprehensive mind body cultivation system such as this requires both self cultivation and physical exercise with cultivation taking priority over exercise. A person's gong will simply not increase if he or she merely does the exercises while failing to cultivate Xin Xing. The exercises are thus a supplemental means of achieving spiritual perfection. I'm we like, have a problem because I do do Tai Chi. Right. I have for quite a few years and I do it because my body just can't handle exercise. Yeah. yeah. But since my strokes, I've gone back a few steps because I've lost my center of balance. I have 
no balance whatsoever. Right. So maybe that's my problem. I need more Xing Shi. Or so can get back into it but yeah it's it's noticeable that it's like no you can't just do the exercises for fun or because you want to you know improve your physical health or even meditate just for you know because i even know some atheists who like to meditate because it helps to you know clear your mind and who and you know just kind of mm -hmm. do that and there's no woo woo necessarily attached to it but um well, yeah, it, it just shows that it's like, no, you have to do all of it. You can't just do the exercise. You have to like let I us tell you what know, to believe. I want to know what these supernatural abilities are. Well, yeah, now, so yeah, they're very vague about that. Well, dude that I talked to, he did give me some specifics because, of course, he was bragging. But he said that he was going to get x-ray vision and that he was going to be able to speak to the dead. Um, what was some out? Then there was one, um, something I was watching earlier today mentioned shape shifting. I'm like, so if I do Falun Gong, I can become Odo? Okay. <laughs> oh, what um, I, I find unusual. Oh, oh, the big one, though, which ties back to because Morgan, you were reading about the idea that, um, what's his name didn't want people to get medical attention that's because they believe that they can heal themselves of any ailment like any well yeah but the woman also was like it's a personal choice but by the way i haven't i stopped taking my meds so that seemed to me that it was like at least heavily discouraged or like they didn't want to come out and say yes well, and yeah, that they're not taking medicine yeah. or they're telling people not to go to the doctor because that, you know, kind of probably furthers any it's, kind of persecution. It's it's kind of like, well, you can go to the doctor if you want, but we'd be really disappointed in your progress of cultivation. Well, yeah, I, it's probably something like I, that. Build up bad karma. Yep. Yep. It, it, taken to any extreme, any religion like Fulan Gong, uh, some of your more fundamentalist religions, extreme religions, they all seem to be against medicine. Yeah. It's like, no matter, I mean, Scientology, same way. Um, uh, obviously, the, the faith healing sucks within Christianity. I mean, oh. it's like, what what is it that makes them want to eschew science, per se? I it's guess, like, I guess. I, I find that really kind of odd. Well, 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 not really, because if you believe that there's some kind of god or or life force power or whatever, then it makes sense that you would believe that that's supposed to take care of those things. Like it's it's like your faith isn't good enough if you're gonna rely on some loser human to do that. Well, I, I find I find it weird because one of the one girl that I went to college with, um, she was a recipient of a kidney transplant years and years ago due to um, I believe Alford syndrome, but she got messed up into a more extreme Christian group that issued medical science altogether and basically after about two or three years into this group she was convinced she no longer needed to take her anti-rejection medications and you can all guess where it led to um, within two years she was dead mm -hmm. now her sisters also got involved now you would think that a rational human being would realize well, my sister followed this protocol to the T, stopped her medication, but she died anyways. You would think these people would be like, fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Nope. Okay. I just don't understand when they know it doesn't work, why well, they would... There could be the, the, the thought that, well, she wasn't doing it right, and oh I I could do it right. I'm, I can yeah. figure it out. And but, that, um, that to me is what makes these groups, whether they might not be outwardly um, dangerous in a sense that uh, dangerous. Society, yeah. they are dangerous on an individual level because they have this belief, uh, you know, issuing. Well, I remember um, when I read up on this the first time, 
reading about um, several members who delayed cancer treatment and then by the time they kind of went oh fuck this isn't working they it was too late and they died yeah so and tris tris says you think it might be the idea that antidepressants are no better than illicit drugs if i was getting high off my antidepressants i'd be a much happier person but and then they said not even just antidepressants but medication in general Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, that's kind of how Scientology looks at it, is, like, any kind of drug is just bad for you, and you should avoid all of it. Because they believe that it, like, stays in your atoms or some shit until you do their purification rundown. and Yeah, or even, like, people who aren't necessarily tied to a religion, but they're, like, especially about, like, you know, drugs that have to do with mental illness, they're like, oh, well, it makes you think differently, and it's like... Well, yeah, that's kind of a whole fucking point. Yes. To make me not want to die every fucking day. Yeah. <laughs> As one with bipolar, I, I, I got, before I knew any better, I got into this one news group. And as you can tell, this is pre-internet uh, that we know today. I, and one of these news groups, it turned out to be uh, uh, basically a flame group from the uh, Scientology CC. CCR, CCH. Oh. Yeah, well, I didn't know this at the time. And I'm like, yeah, it makes me think, like you said, it makes me think differently. I don't want to fucking kill myself today. Yeah, and exactly. It's like, and it's the same thing like when, when uh, I had my strokes and they put me on, um, I'm on a medication for my heart and I'm also on medication for my high blood pressure. Both of which now, if I go without, would either really, really, really fuck me up bad, like another stroke, or fucking kill me. <laughs> so, yeah, being on these medications are, is kind of life well, and death. And people like, are like, oh, you can do without it. Well, that's um, like uh, Tori Magoo from Scientology fame. She quit. One of the reasons that she quit, and I mean, she was in back in you know the the 70s i think yeah. uh, was because she has epilepsy yeah. and they told her she had to get off her epilepsy meds and she tried and ended up having seizures all the fucking time so I'm, she was like yeah no <laughs> as one who practiced meditation and i do in tai chi although my tai chi is very weak right now I mean, yeah, there's benefits from meditation. I'll be, I use it to manage my, uh, manage my pain so I don't have to pop narcotics every fucking day um, just to get out of bed. And I use it to help center, you know, center myself as far as my mood swings because I don't take medication for my bipolar anymore. I can't because it was destroying my liver, which is why I'm diabetic. So there's kind of a trade-off there, but I would take the meds any day. You know, if I needed to fuck my liver, they can fix that. Yeah. But so, yeah, there, there's a benefit to it as far as like Morgan said, not using it as a woo woo tactic. Yes. But when you start attaching spirituality to it, for lack of a better word, then it gets kind of when you say, oh, wait, I can, if I meditate hard enough, I will get x ray vision or whatever. Oh well, we we have we're we're there's still a bit more to go here. We're getting a little more wooey as we go, so because now we start talking about supernatural abilities and you know the stuff that these exercises your gong force. <laughs> well, now we get to um, have a dingling for the gong force, <laughs> shin shang or whatever it was. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, shin shang. Ching ching, ching ching. Yeah, I just had to. There we go. Okay, so next we have Fallen Dafa involves the cultivation of a Falun or law wheel. So that's where Falun comes from. The Falun is an intelligent rotating entity composed of higher energy matter. The Falun that Master Li Hongshu plants in practitioner's lower abdomen 
from other dimensions rotates constantly 24 hours a day. True cultivators can acquire a Falun by reading Master Lee's books, watching his nine session lectures on video, listening to his nine session lectures on audio cassette, or studying together with students of Falun Dafa. The Falun helps practitioners to practice automatically. That is, the Falun refines the practitioner at all times, even though he or she isn't performing the exercises at every moment. Of all practices made public in the world today, only Falun Dafa has managed to achieve a state in which the Fa refines the person. The rotating Falun has the same qualities as the universe and is the universe's miniature. So you get a miniature universe in your abdomen. <laughs> the Buddhist Falun, the Taoist yin yang, and everything of the 10 directional world are reflected in the Falun. The Falun provides salvation to the practitioner when it rotates inward clockwise. And since it absorbs a great amount of energy from the universe and transforms it into gong energy. The Falun provides salvation to others when rotating outward counterclockwise. For it releases energy that can save any being and rectify any abnormal condition. Being in the presence of someone who, is pra who practices thus benefits a person. <sighs> so, translation? <laughs> uh, you get a rotating universe in your abdomen that can do all kinds of shit. Is that kind of like Ezekiel's wheel? Oh, oh or Krishna's wheel. Mm-hmm. Except Krishna chops people's heads off with it. But what? I don't know about <laughs> any of this. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are y'all talking about? Uh, Krishna has a wheel of karma that he spins around on his finger. Like, like have you ever seen how Wonder Woman like throws her her yeah, yeah lasso of like, truth? Not the lasso, the the flying disc that like cuts people. Yeah. Okay, yes. I've seen that. Yeah, that's like Krishna has one of those, but he, he spins it around on his finger and then he just kind of flicks it and it goes and decapitates people. It's kind of fun. Cool. That's much cooler than what Jesus has. I know. Hey, we got, I will say that. We got Atheist Ranger in the house there, too. <laughs> he says, Fallen Gong sounds like the name of a Bruce Lee villain. <laughs> yeah, my Bruce Lee villain. But I mean, okay, so so let's backtrack here. So the Falun, um, let's see, a ro an intelligent rotating entity composed of high energy matter. That's 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 what a that really reminds me of a Thetan. Got to say. <laughs> Well, if you consider the time period when when this supposedly well, came I was out. just gonna say, I wonder if this Li Hongzhu guy studied Scientology at some point. Exactly, because and, and if you think about it, you have okay. Let's say for the sake of argument that he did get exposed to Scientology in some way, shape, or form. Scientology got exposed to Mormonism. I mean, it goes right back. It. Is everyone yeah. building on... Well, look at my parallels between Joseph Smith and Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like there was a, a chart that I have, and it traces the um, all the known religions to a degree. Right. I, I don't remember how many are on this list. And it's a big, giant tree. And it all, when you take the root, the root core of the beliefs, you can trace them back to where they all come out of one, you know, the beginning, well, animism is actually the beginning religion. And they all trace back to the same root. And yeah. this is, you know, this came out in, in the 90s. So, of There's course, none of, this, none of this shit is original. Like yeah. they all plagiarize from each other. They just, they, you know, it's it's China, so they call it a Xin Xing or a Falun instead of a Thetan, and yeah. It, but it, 
it just sounds so like the rotating stuff is is a bit odd but if you take that from um uh like the wheel it, they said it was a buddhist following mm -hmm. I have to ask my husband about that. He's the Buddhist in the house. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Arno probably would have better. Yeah, insight. he's um, actually getting his teeth cleaned right now. Otherwise, I'd haul him in here. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> it's just Thursday, he would be doing Tai Chi, but. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's weird ass. So, but just a little bit, I want to go into a little bit of the history before we get too far into the weirdness of it all. Um, it, so it started in 92. Now, apparently, the Chinese government initially loved it. Mm -hmm. They thought it was awesome. They used to put out propaganda in favor of it. They threw out all kinds of um, figures like, oh, it it had caused an 80% improvement in the population's health and all this shit. And they, they would put all kinds of um, uh, videos of, you know, hundreds of people in their little formations doing their exercises together and all. And they all would be wearing like matching outfits because, well, China. Um, which to me is really creepy. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't want to be in a group of 300 people wearing the same shit unless it was a Star Trek convention. <laughs> I don't want anybody to even see me work out. So that's me. I'm always like at the gym. I'm like, avert your eyes. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> There's nothing to see here. <laughs> but um, it was now, they, uh, they often cite uh, the government started to or started to go after them in 99 but actually what i found was the the real beginnings of the of their problem with falun gong started in about 97 um they at that point the claim was uh and remember china has what two billion people or something like that um the claim was that there were a hundred million members of falun gong by 97 so i mean that's crazy because it was started in what like the official text started coming out in like 1992 so that they're claiming that basically this has more people than scientology did at its peak yeah exactly which is yeah. crazy or even mormonism i believe absolutely oh more mormonism is trying to say that they've got i think they're trying to claim 20 million right now but they're not there's nowhere near, that's what they're claiming but you know that's not even but they were claiming that they had 100 million which is yeah. i mean it's china so i guess you know it would be like oh well, we have to you know bump up the numbers a little bit because 10 million in the context of china may not be enough to really sound that impressive even though i'd be kind of impressed if a new religion had 10 million followers no matter where it was but oh, exactly. um or not impressed i'd be kind of astounded i'd be like whoa this thing must be like wait what's up with this but um yeah it's, that's just crazy that they um the chinese government at first was for it because i didn't run into that in fact they even um the one video i watched it showed some early propaganda clips and they even um talked about claims of miraculous cures that that the government was like saying, oh yeah, there's been miraculous cures uh, caused by this, and then so around ninety seven, they the leader at the time started kind of going, wait a minute, the the this this is more popular than me. I don't think I like this, and that's when the government started to turn against them. And they finally made uh, the religion illegal in 99. So that's why most people quote 99 as the year because it was officially made illegal. But before that, they had started um, like trying to force people to stop following it. Like they would kick people out of parks and maybe like arrest them for you know disorderly conduct or something like that and 
And well, now, so wasn't there a big protest that they did? And yes. it was very, um, it was this, bef do you know if this was before or after it was made officially illegal? Because I heard there was a huge protest and it, it like kind of enraged the government because it was, it was. Yes, it was before they made it illegal. Um, okay. Fact, but they, they, made it, they made it illegal very shortly after that. So it was something like. You know, thousands and thousands of people showed up to Tiananmen Square to protest. And then it was like, oh, yeah, fuck you. You're now all illegal. And they started okay. persecuting. Well, th this is from the wiki article going to uh, the acceptance by the government in the beginning. It goes, in 1993, the Beijing-based Fulan Dafa Research Society was accepted as a branch of the state-run China Qigong Research Society, which oversaw the administration of the country's various Qigong schools and sponsored activities and su seminars. It's it's just not to be nitpicky, but it's actually Qi, Qigong. Oh, Qigong. Yeah, I because know that because I named my one cat Young Qi. Duh. <laughs> and it's and that whole that whole um genre is call is qi gong is to do with the the facilitating of the flow of your qi yes it wow. goes yeah that whole thing but going back to another point you made is that uh with with the communist party and, and it becoming outlawed <clears throat> as uh fulan gong grew in popularity it spooked the communist regime yeah, because it grew so quickly, they were like, whoa, 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 what the fuck, man? Like This goes to a point that you and I and many others make regarding what I call the atheist atrocity fall fallacy of mm -hmm. being, that, oh, you know, when people are, the, the whole morality argument because of Stalin and Hitler being allegedly being atheists and Pol Pot, yada, 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 it has yep. nothing do with their alleged atheism no uh, they it, it has to do with the fact that it became so popular it became a challenge or a challenger to the and uh, fact, you know you know what it reminds me of um in the uh, time of the inquisition the inquisition came about because Catholic countries were trying to force all the Jews to become Catholic, but then they yes. kind of went, wait a minute, did they really convert? We don't think we can trust them. And the exactly. Inquisition was created because they didn't trust that the Jews would become Catholic. So it, it reminds me of that. It, but funny you bring that up because um, one of the videos I watched on YouTube, it was from 2013. And it was like a cable access show um, out of Vancouver. And it had a woman, uh, not Chinese actually, because non-Chinese followers of Falun Gong are actually pretty rare. Uh, but this was a white lady who was a Falun Gong practitioner. And sh they did like a whole hour show of her talking about it. But one of the things she talked about because they talked about the persecution in China quite a bit. She kept calling China a violent atheistic regime. And she kept trying to spin it that it was their atheistic nature that was forcing them or getting trying to make them stop being Falun Gong, which I was like, uh, no. No, it's the authoritarianism, and it's the whole thing where, like, yes, they do, I mean, obviously, if not, they don't necessarily mandate it, I don't think, but they do strongly prefer you to be atheist because that falls in line with their authoritarian teachings. And at the end of the day, China's an authoritarian government. Yeah, That's and the thing about. is, it, it's not anything to do with hating on religion per se it's about the realization that a devout faith is a direct challenge to following any political leader without question also um it does say in the wiki article that um Falun Gong actually discourages you from being um, active in social and political issues or really 
um, political life. So I can see where that would be a challenge to them because it'd be like, oh, well, I mean, not necessarily on social and political issues that would challenge the government, but particularly on, you know, um, they obviously don't want that. So I can see how they would like it at first because they're telling people, hey, don't become active in these social and political causes. But um, also with that is it's also kind of ignoring what the government says and kind of ignoring like what um, and instead of following this Master Lee guy. So I can see where that would be another challenging authority figure. And as an authoritarian leader, you can't have that. Exactly. In fact, um, they went as far, get this, uh, to create something called the 610 office which mm -hmm. sounds like something right out of a james bond flick and it kind of is um it is a, a wing of the communist government specifically um uh created to deal with falun gong like that that wow. is their job. stop falun gong <laughs> So um, how many members did they realistically have? Because that seems crazy to me to have a whole government office to. Well, if the reports of 100 million are true, that's a shit ton of people. I just said, yeah, I just don't know how true that is. Wiki um, outline ish. Okay. He can put oh, I, up. I have the wiki article for 610 open. Oh, that, okay. yeah, <laughs> I, I did. I, I just just as you were mentioning 610 i just happened to see that and i was like oh yeah no i looked because um one of the videos i watched mentioned it and i was like 610 office what the fuck is that and it's called 610 because it was created on june 10th of 99 which was the year that they abolished falun gong so, yeah, it says it was established for the purpose of coordinating and implementing the persecution of Falun Gong. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I find kind of interesting, especially with the 610 thing, is some of the parallels to um, Orwell's 1984. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and it goes like the, the whole notion of the atrocities, fallacy, etc., and, and the um, plagiarizing or alleged so-called plagiarizing from other re possible religions like Scientology. And yep. you know, it, it, it all goes to show you that there is nothing new. I mean, this is just the same shit going back to, like you said, during the medieval times, just, you know, in the Inquisition, just being repeated over and over and over again now we're you know we're seeing i mean obviously the the issue with fulan gong has been ongoing since the 90s but it, it's the same same and over again it, it's yep. one type of regime whether it's state run or religion trying to suppress whether for good or for bad i mean that's you know remains to be seen of another's religion and i find it interesting if you want to make a parallel is the the state government in china sees them as a threat to to their power let's take it to what we have today our current administration do yeah. you honestly fucking think people that donald trump is going to allow Christian fundamentalists to tell him what the fuck to do. Mm. Because here Trump is an authoritarian authoritarian. I mean, he he thinks he should be king. He's using the Reich to get what he wants. Well, when he gets what he wants, if rumors are true that Rosenstein submitted his resignation today, which will eliminate they're not i didn't hear you morgan oh i said um they're not true they he's actually going to go on thursday to the white house he canceled his meeting where he was going to go and he's going thursday to meet at the white house ah okay i heard he supposedly submitted an oral resignation but 
there was a bunch of stories on Rosenstein. I felt like there was a new one every five minutes about what he did or didn't do or what he's thinking about doing. I was like, good Lord, like just leave the man alone for now. Slept slept all day. So I'm only, I'm a little behind whether that's true or not. But if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, whether it's true or not, I mean, Trump is consolidating his power by eliminating people he feels are threat to his kingship. Do you honestly think the Reich's going to be part of that? Yeah. I mean, and, and we see it with as a possible parallel as to what China's doing to Fulang Gong and is still doing. Yeah. I mean, here well, they were all for him, you know, 20 years ago, and now they're all against them. Yeah. Wow. You know? Well, this uh, 610 office, they have specific functions. So, um, they are responsible for surveillance and intelligence on Falun Gong possible members. Um, they are in charge of anti Falun Gong propaganda. And I've, there's a bit of that on uh, YouTube if you care to have a look. And, fa- and then, but I found that there was, there was pro Falun Gong propaganda too. I was telling, um, Beth about some, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, the 610 office is also in charge of re-education and detention. So if you get caught as a Falun Gong practitioner, they could send you to a re-education camp. Um, and they also say that people are beaten and whatnot. Um, it says they interfere in the legal system. So, because it says the majority of detained Falun Gong practitioners are sentenced administratively to re education through labor camps. So, it's not like part of the, the regular um, criminal system. They don't get sent to prison, they're like special camps for them. Um, I've also but- heard that they like take organs or whatever from like they execute yes. them and take their organs. So I heard I saw a CNN report from um, let's see, it was from 2016 and it was talking about how this Canadian human rights attorney um, found um, that if he compared the um, amount of organ transplants with like the list of like, Hey, here's all the organ donors we had this year. And he was like, yeah, they don't match up because the communist party says the total number of legal transplants was about 10,000 per year. But the report estimates that 60,000 to a hundred thousand organs were transplanted every year in Chinese hospitals. So it could be, that first figure seems way low for a population that size. Yeah, that did. And I'm wondering if like they're getting also if they could be getting organs from like different countries or if, you know, they can get them flown in from Hong Kong, you know, Japan, even like things like that. But well, the um, one, depending uh, on where they are, the the cable access video I watched with that lady, they played another video in their show that was strictly about the organ transplantation and now in that video they i can't vouch for the veracity of the footage but they had footage of people undercover phoning doctors that they believed were involved in this organ transplant underground thing and asking specifically how many Falun Gong people do you have that I could get organs from? And they were like, oh, well, we have six right now. And like asking, well, how many men and women and how many are under under 20 and, and stuff like that. So it, it sure made it seem like they were just going to some re-education camp and be like, oh, we'll take that one. And just like, going and harvesting their organs and one person uh, it might have been the the woman on that show or another one i watched claimed and i i i don't know but claimed that they were harvesting the organs without anesthetic as part of their punishment 
Yeah, I'd have to see some more backup on that because again, it's yeah. written so hard to see what's true and what's not because you have this like pro cult propaganda, but then you also have this anti cult propaganda. But it's not interested in like telling people the dangers of this cult. It's more about like making these people look as evil as possible because we're a threat to an authoritarian government. So it's like very yeah. difficult to tell what is true. And again, it's like I guess this is probably one of those situations where the truth is probably in the middle I but, was, um i did i did look at their number their demographics in there and it said that most of these um members were elderly women so i don't know how you know many you know and typically you know i'm thinking like probably most elderly women they get sick from cancer or heart disease or things like that so i'm not sure how many good organs are getting but the other thing that pops to mind and i mean this may sound really crass but Okay, if you have superpowers and the ability to heal yourself, then why are you falling victim to any of this? Yeah, it's... Because you think somebody somewhere will have achieved some of these things, you'd think, but... I, I shoot laser at them. The point Morgan was making as where in all of this taking it to light what you just said about these supposed superpowers where's the truth yeah and i think being that we're here in north america canada and u.s um i don't think we're ever really gonna know unless you know ex members begin to like in the case of Scientology come out and start to really speak to these issues but I think it was a while ago when we were, we were contemplating doing this episode Deb, you and I both have looked for ex-members to no avail I've been ever since I discovered them and and you know started doing a podcast I've been like I want to talk to an ex-Falun Gong member and they are few and far between. And like I say, a lot of them that, that do become disillusioned with it, it happens after they have some sort of ailment that they are find out is terminal. And by that point, you know, they, they denounce everything. And by the time somebody like me comes along, they've been dead for years. Yeah. And, and that's uh, and, and the problem I've run into is that most of the quote so-called ex-members um, seem to disappear. Yes. And or yeah. I can see where they'd be like instead the Chinese government might use them as tools or even claim this person was an ex-member of Falun Gong and it's like they actually weren't or they're exaggerating things. But yeah, I think it's going to have to take like a maybe a documentary like going clear or, you know, some good investigative reporting as well. Like what happened with Scientology where you had ex-members coming out and speaking out. But you also did have these investigative reports coming out as well. So I yeah. think that's going to be the only way we learn about that. And in China, that's kind of hard to do with between the authoritarian government that's controlling the yeah. press. And then you have, yeah, this um, be, these cult members that are very hard to find. They have um, people practicing all over the world now. But again, even outside of China, the vast majority of the practitioners are Chinese expats. Yeah. So, like I say, finding a non-Chinese person who practices is, is difficult. Like, I've seen a smattering. Like, the woman in the video I watched and Buddy on Twitter, I have no idea if the other member that yelled at him was Chinese or not, but... Um, then there was I there was a video I found of a guy um, who he worked for them for uh, a few months. So, actually, ha Morgan, have you ever seen um, the Chinese uh, like ads for the Chinese performance of it's called Shun Yen? No, I've never seen them. Okay. It's, uh, they have ads in the malls and stuff around all over the place. And they have three, they're like Cirque du Soleil, but they're like a Chinese group. 
Uh, actually, I think they're they're called Chinese ballet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay. They are um, they perform all over the world. They have several troops, and this guy, um, white guy, got a job as a musician in the orchestra for them, and oddly enough, part of the um, so they are linked to Falun Gong. They're Falun Gong members, and they use the performances. Um, oh, Matt. Hey, Matt. Matt's in the chat. He's been to one of those. Hey, Matt, did they preach at that? Because I've heard that they, they proselytize in between um, parts of the show. But anyway, um, this fellow I saw the video of, he got a job in the orchestra, and part of his job um, to be able to do that, they forced him to practice Falun Gong as part of his job. Wow. Yeah, and like his attitude, I got the impression that he was probably a non a non believer, and his attitude was like, "Nah, I whatever." I just went with the flow because I liked what I was doing, and it didn't, you know, meditation's fine and what have you. Um, but then, of course, as the months went on, things got weirder, and then he 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 was um, ready to move on anyway, so he got himself fired basically uh but he was talking about like some of the his experiences and whatnot so matt says he don't re doesn't recall that they said anything about them okay because i've heard reports that this shen yuan or shen shen yun yeah shen shen yun they um um because they have a captive audience that they preach about Falun Gong as part of the performance so maybe maybe they don't I don't know I was just what I was told but I I mean they look like amazing performers for sure I've seen because the when they do a kiosk um in the mall they'll have like videos of them playing and try and sell you tickets and stuff oh Matt says it was weird though <laughs> <laughs> how is it weird Matt <laughs> Did they share class? Did did they have X-ray vision, or they could like fly or some shit? Shoot laser beams out of their eyes. Yes, that's <laughs> like on Austin Powers when they talk about the laser beams. Lasers, the lasers. <laughs> why, why? I've been thinking about that movie a lot lately, and I have no idea why. <laughs> uh, so. So another interesting um, bit about this, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, well, first of all, not just not, I want to say interesting, but going back to another reason why they are potentially dangerous. They're also in past years. Now, I haven't heard of it happening anytime lately. It's been probably about a decade since it's happened, but... Um, some members have self-immolated, as in set themselves on fire, uh, in protest of the persecution in China, mostly. Um, there's uh, a pair of women, and I've actually read about them before, and there's videos out with them now, um, because I forget what, what year it was. Was it 20... And... Or two, I forget. Um, the there were seven people that went to Tiananmen Square and set themselves on fire, and these two women—it was a mother and a daughter—they survived. But of course, they have horrific injuries, like just. And, and now you can totally tell if you see them in an interview, they're being used as propaganda for for the government. Like, yeah. The one video I saw, um, because it was the mother doing this talking, and like I say, she's horribly disfigured. And she's talking about why what she did, you know, was wrong and all of this. And she's, oh, and the government takes care of us, and they're so kind to us, and this and that. And then she goes on about, you know, why Falun Gong so awful. I'm like, yeah, you... I understand you need, you know, you, you got to have somebody help take care of you, but you're totally like a cog in the propaganda machine now. 
But, yeah, and again, it'd be so interesting if she spoke about her actual experience, but it's yeah. like, and again, you said watching it, you could tell she was a total, you know, prop by the Chinese government. It just, you know, that's why, again, it's like so hard to tell what the truth is about this organization, you know, and how exactly dangerous they are, you know, how, what their actual practices are, because obviously there's some bad persecution going on by the government, and that's not right, but yeah. they, they also, like, we don't know if they're actually, like, a threat. I mean, it seems like they are, if they're especially telling people to, you know, not seek medical treatment, that in itself is enough to, you know, be a bad group in my book. But, you know, as far as any other of their wild practices go, you know, um, not sure. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and Matt says in reference to uh, Shen Yun, um, just the things that they did were odd. Um, it's been about 10 years since he saw it, though, so. What did they do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's funny. I just Googled Shen Yun. It says, uh, Shen Yun Performing Arts is a performing arts and entertainment company formed in New York City. And get this, headquartered in Cuddlebackville, Orange County, New York. Cuddlebackville. Well, they certainly were all words. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, it says they perform classical Chinese dance, ethnic and folk dance, and story based dance with orchestral accompaniment and solo performances. So they were founded in 2006. Interesting. Interesting. That's that's yeah. wild though. I'd be I'd be kind of mad if there was like because I don't know if a you know Matt said he doesn't remember any preaching or proselytizing, but then you know your other friend did. I'd be kind of mad because I love like circus soleil's kind of type of yeah. stuff, and then I'd be like mad. I'd be like, stop preaching. I'm here to see acrobatics. <laughs> like, uh, and, and, I've been too. That, that's what makes it so attractive. I mean, you have. Uh, whether they use uh, music or dance or whether they use um, movies. I mean, like... Uh, I mean, Christians like, do that, too. Exactly. Yeah. All the... Re I mean, to pick on Scientology, um, Battlefield Earth uh, by L. Ron Hubbard. I mm -hmm. actually enjoyed the book. Uh, once. Terrible movie. Horrible, horrible movie. <laughs> John Tra. Yeah, I, I'm not a big John Travolta fan, anyways, uh, and it, it, it is because of his religious beliefs. But if you're not familiar with Scientology, you would never catch, especially in the book, you would never catch the subtle undertones that are there. In the movie, what uh, besides cramming a um, thousand page book into a three uh two and a half three hour movie virtually impossible they should have learned from dune uh but they didn't um they tried to cram the entire book into one movie which it, the the book is like two and a half inches three inches thick it's it's a long book but it's yeah good. you gotta make it to like an hbo series or something yeah it, yeah. it would have been better as a a, a series on TV than a movie, unless they could do it as, as a, you know, uh, two parter or something, but it would have taken away from the entire movie or it would have been a really, really long movie. But the fact that Travolta, from my understanding, had fought for at least 10 years to get the movie made. Yeah. And part of the reason being because of Scientology, um, and then he interjected even more with in the movie, made the movie just, in my opinion, absolutely horrendous. Um, yeah, it stuck to the book to to a degree, but it was just if they're gonna if a, if a religion is going to go to that point to overtake uh, just something as simple as a movie or or, or dance, you know, like this Chinese group, it's just what won't they? undermine i mean must be about uh, dominionism type kind of stuff in a way yeah, well yeah. a lot of it is i mean there there's actually like if you all remember there was a string of arc movies 
there was a string of uh, <coughs> Nephilim themed movies. No. Um, uh... Yeah, a few years ago, and that is actually uh, fall, part of, of the Dominion. <laughs> the oh. whole Dominion of Seven Mountains mandate bullshit. Yeah, Passion of Christ. <laughs> By wow. the way, I that think that was a big one. I think I think um, they need to be forced to give up the title Dominion because that's totally Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching well, I'm watching Deep Space Nine during the Dominion War right now, so. <laughs> Fuck but, you, Reginus. I want the Dominion back to Star Trek. But but if you think about it, you have you know the Dominion movement within Christianity who has their propaganda bullshit, and then you have Scientology that has their propaganda bullshit. And you have Mormonism. I mean, every religion tries to overtake some aspect to to further along their their beliefs. And as like it's like you said, Morgan. I mean. I'm just there to watch fucking acrobatics. That's it. We don't want any of this other bullshit. Exactly. As, uh, and, you know, the harp on the, the Dominionist creationist bullshit. I mean, some of the movies they've put out or mm. they've sponsored are just absolutely... I'm not a movie person. I don't have the attention span for a movie. If it's If you can't do it to me, do, you know explain to me the gist of something within 60 minutes see you bye yep. <laughs> I, I have the attention span of a gnat that's why i don't go to movies i'm not going to spend you know what is it 16 dollars now for a movie when i'm going to be getting up every five minutes to go pee you know no uh, if if i can't put it on pause and come back to it when i when i'm more into it i ain't gonna watch it so it's like but yeah every i mean like there, the there's books they've they've overtaken, they've destroyed. It. In some cases, you know, for some people, reading. I mean, well, the the whole genre of Christian literature is just pathetic. But I mean, oh yeah, because I was listening to something, and this girl was talking about how she was she really likes, you know, she was really into for a period of time, you know, especially like dystopian literature kind of thing, and like you know, like end of a world scenarios and stuff like that. So she just happened to come across the Left Behind series, oh. and then she read the first book, and in the middle of the second book, she said, "Wait a second, this is about Jesus." And she was like so mad that they tricked her. Like she was so serious. mad about that. I would, well, but yeah, she didn't realize. She just thought it was a dystopian end of the world scenario. And she was like, "Well, this is interesting. You know, people vanish and their clothes are left behind. You know, not getting that that was a total Christian That's thing." True. But yeah, she just in the middle of the second book, she was just like, "Hang well, on a second. You. Well, it's like you know, if you read the Narnia books and then somebody tells you that Aslan is Jesus, you're like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I I love that series. It, it do. does actually change the whole way you look at the book yep. or the series. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean and, and what's even funnier, just to go off on a little side tangent, I won't get, is that Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were friends. Yep. And, oh, yeah, they all were. Yeah, buddy. And, and, you know, Tolkien, some claim that he was an atheist. I think he more leaned to a really bad practicing, I think he was Catholic. But, you know, and, and Lord of the Rings was kind of a, or uh, I can't, my, might have back, backwards, but Lord of the Rings was kind of a reaction to the, the Narnia series and vice versa. And it's like, <coughs> I just want to read these books. I don't give a shit about the backstory. So going back to, um, I, I looked it up and the, uh, it's actually got an official title, the Tiananmen Square Self-Immolation Incident, which was uh, January 23rd of 2001. I vaguely so, remember that, but I did not realize it was associated yeah. with Falun Gong. And uh, interesting that I just pulled up the wiki, and the first thing it says is, uh, this incident is disputed. And it's and it's interesting that they say that because just as they say, the way that woman was talking and her daughter, like the daughter only came on for a couple of minutes at the end and was basically like, don't practice falling gong kind of thing. And 
so they're saying now her story is that they went there and did that in protest of being persecuted as Falun Gong members. And I, I forgot to add it's on my notes here. The guy who organized it, he claimed that he was like a master, like Li Hongshu guy, and that he had attained the highest level, whatever that meant. And that if they self immolated, that they could reach that level as well. And if you think about it, if you believe that you have healing superpowers and you're immortal and shit, then, you know, what's a little fire between friends, right? Um, so that was her story. But then other people claimed at the time that the government actually staged it to discredit Falun Gong members. I'm like, okay, I don't care how great a leader you are how the fuck do you convince somebody to set themselves on fire i mean you could i could see a, somebody convincing people of that especially if you know you have a lot of brainwashing in that but i don't think that like it seems pretty clear that it was actual members that were doing this and i don't think they would be trying to further the government's propaganda against them if anything i think that this protest upset the government even further because it looked like you know there's dissident there's dissent and there's you know well, people protest the government they don't like that they turned it around really quickly because so seven people went to Tiananmen Square only five set themselves on fire and of those five three actually survived and what they're saying is um one of the the things that concerned people was that um Let's see. Um, two weeks after the incident, the Washington Post published an investigation into the identity of the two victims that were killed and found no one ever saw them practice Falun Gong. Well, that's, uh, you know, that just means maybe they didn't like to do it in public. Who knows? Um, but then it says... Um, other evidence surfaced by journalists and international observers suggesting the Chinese authorities knew in advance of it. Well, if they thought it was going to make them look crazy, they may have just said, okay, set yourself on fire. We don't care. But then it also said that um, uh, the, the survivors were only accessible to reporters from China's state-run press. Um, international media and even the victims' families were barred from contacting them. Well, what this reminds me of or makes me think of is the current alleged persecution. And I say alleged because, again, it's coming out of China, so who knows what we can believe and what we oh, can't. Oh, the, Mus the Muslim thing. But the, yeah, the Muslim thing. Now, one of the shows I like to watch on YouTube <coughs> actually did a bit in uh, that area of China <coughs> excuse me the having some of this stuff you know as far as uh, the alleged treatment of the I'm sorry I got a dry spot in my throat the alleged treatment by China of the of these Muslim practitioners I, I found the episode interesting because you saw none of that in his videos. And his videos are not coming from any uh, propaganda uh, side. It's just he likes food. He likes weird food. He's really into especially Chinese food uh, <coughs> in these far and away places. <coughs> so there's no political bias in these videos videos that I can tell and to throw this one caveat he's Canadian um, so he just goes up there and he's actually moved to China now as far as I know yeah and, well I don't know if he would know about it would he like well, even, this, that's the thing he's now I think these videos were shot prior to the news kind of becoming more um, uh more seen like it is today this might have been shot last year before it hit the news so <coughs> but there's none of this persecution 
Well, I mean, I would, I mean, I see like, you know, it definitely what's going on with the Rohingya and Burma and all that. So I'm wondering if that's kind of also, I can see where, you know, a country like China might also get on board with that and, you know, do that because they think these people are dangerous for whatever reason. And like I said before, like any persecution of a religion in the, the followers is, you know, wrong, but and again, it's difficult to discern out what's really happening there. But yeah, I would absolutely believe that they're going after um, these people in the same vein as like Burma has been going after the Rohingya. But um, yeah. but yeah, I, I've seen these reports come out fairly recently, so I don't know all the details about it yet. So I can only speak to, you know, what I've seen. I've seen fairly reputable news organizations talk about it. Well, it certainly would be uh, consistent with their usual practice. In China, yes, I, yeah, I believe, yeah, they they have a hit long history of persecuting minority groups and um, religious minorities and ethnic minorities. So, yeah, it's it's troubling stuff, but yeah, definitely. Um, now, another angle about these, uh, about Falun Gong that came up when I was looking at stuff. Um, they actually have kind of a doomsday element to them as well. They Yeah, is this the alien thing? Uh, I didn't get to that part. I was, they have, they believe that um, there's a Dharma ending cycle and that um uh, Healing, oh, that so healing isn't the perp, the sole purpose of Falun Gong, but because of it, he, their, their, their practice heals everything anyway. So once the, the Dharma cycle is over and everything falls to shit, they can heal everything. I don't know. What, tell me about the aliens. Well, we okay. We, the the Falun is a spinning entity. Is this different then? I I don't know because I did see in the articles mentioned um, that you know this group they believe that aliens were going to take over the world, but then it looked like the leader Master Lee came out and said, "No, this is just like an allegory for like ancient Buddhist." teachings that I, I think he was just trying to put like a modern spin on but I don't know if that was just him trying to back off and make his group sound less crazy or if he was just trying to like put a modern twist on it so it didn't you know because it, it's the 90s and I think that was a very big thing for people to do is to you know be like oh what if we said Joan of Arc but in modern times you know <laughs> stuff like that so it was like you know hopping on that craze but um yeah, so who knows? But yeah, and it's it does have that. The aliens apparently are tied to that doomsday thing of where they take over the world, and there's this thing. But apparently, he's saying that it's um, tied to these Buddhist um, ideals. Ah, interesting. I have to see. I wish my husband was home. I'd be like, "Yo, sweetie, you didn't tell me there was aliens in Buddhism." <laughs> I, I don't think there's aliens in Buddhism still, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it's funny that Fulang Gong uh, may have a, a alien aspect to it. You have um, Scientology with Zeno. You have um, Raelians. It's like, what is it with religions that have come out primarily since the 90s have all this extraterrestrial bullshit attached to it? It's like, Buddhism, from my understanding, from what I, I, I learned, I took a class on Buddhism, not uh, an academic look at it, not a uh, religious perspective. And it's like, I don't remember anything, like you said, Deb, anything in Buddhist teachings talking about aliens. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but he said it was like a metaphor, so it's not like he's saying he's not saying aliens are in a Buddhist teaching, but I don't know what it would be a metaphor for because I'm just kind of more have a lay person's understanding of Buddhism. I don't know about the in right. like what exactly that metaphor would serve as. Yeah. Well, and then again, you can look at it as which type of Buddhism because contrary That's to true. belief, yeah. 
there are different sects within Buddhism. I mean, for instance, there's there's the Tibetan. Um, my husband is Zen Buddhist, which comes from Japan. Well, some are theistic and some are not theistic. Yeah. Kind of, I got into this argument in the crazy group with one dude, and he's like, "Do your fucking research." I'm like, "Dude, I am." It says, uh, "My my Hayden and uh, I can't remember the other one are theistic, uh, or not theistic. I can't, I might have it backwards. Are theistic and X Y Z are not theistic." There, I said, "How many sects in Buddhism do you think there are?" And he's like, "One." I was like, no, dude. There's like, I think there's seven total. Right. Depends. Are you are you an uh, from India? Are you from Tibet? Are you you know Japan? I mean, they all have variations within the Buddhist yeah. teeth. And some revere Buddha himself as God. Some do not. Some have a, you know, it's like, and it's with any any religion. I'd be curious to find out um, with practitioners of Fulong Gong whether those that have that are Chinese in a sense that they live in China, if their beliefs are any different from uh, the westernized folk. Yeah, westernized Chinese, uh, different, and are they different from us white? Yeah. You know, I mean. It'd be interesting to see if there's a difference. And what would really be interesting is, and Dub, maybe you might know the answer to this, has the actual founder who lives in the U.S., at least according to Wiki, um, what does he say or has he made any statement concerning the uh, so-called persecution in China? Not that I know of. Uh, well, funny you should ask, because I was Googling um, aliens and Falun Gong, and what I found instead was an interview with Mr. Li Hongzhi um, from Time Magazine from 1999, <laughs> which skimming through here has got some funny shit. So the, the interviewer asked some stuff, and he goes, in your book, Xuan Falun, Want Falun, whatever. Uh, you talk about people levitating off the ground, but you say they should not show other people. Why is that? Well, I know why that is, but he says it's the same principle that Western gods in paradise should not be seen by ordinary mortals because they cannot understand its meaning. And so, bullshit. Yes. I'll turn into salt. Yeah. He says, well, have you seen human beings levitate off the ground? Oh, I have known men too many. Can you describe any that you've known? So remember what he just said in the question before. Don't show other people. He says, so can, he you can, show can you describe other people? Oh, no, no. Better than that. David Copperfield, he can levitate and he did it doing performances. He's a magician. He performs in Vegas. Okay, but is that not showing people? Mm -hmm. That that's showing. Oh my <laughs> god, it's an illusion. Yeah. And also, he's not a member of that weird cult, to my knowledge. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't know he was Falun Gong. And then um, he says, "You have said that this type of qi gong should not be used to cure illness. Why is that?" So healing illnesses belongs to the lower level of qigong. A person with an illness cannot practice a higher level. One has to purify one's body in order to have gong. Healing and fitness are for laying foundation. So he says, um, would you use qigong to cure an illness? Well, I can do all of this, but I won't do it. <laughs> Why not? It's like I have a girlfriend in Canada, and she's yeah. six feet tall and made of boobs. Yes. So why not? Because I only teach people how to learn the Dafa and to practice cultivation. I only teach the principles of Fa to mankind. I won't do anything else. And he says, what's the final goal? The ultimate purpose is to enable people to attain the Tao and to complete their cultivation practice. In the end, they can free themselves from the worldly state. I know that human lives are not created from the, from the dimension that human beings think they know. Uh, okay. That was so much 
Deepak Chopra type right. nonsense. But also, if you could go around healing people, like, I feel like you're a bad person if you don't. Exactly. And then he says, um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I scrolled up too far. Uh, why does the master reveal his path to, to the Qigong now? He says, mankind is many things that, ha that it never knew before. What I can tell you is that human moral values are no longer good. The course of the cultivation practice, one can upgrade oneself. Many people will be able to complete their cultivation to attain the Tao. There will be, there will be some who will not be able to complete cultivation, but will become very good people. Okay. <laughs> and he says, why did you come to New York? Well, the Chinese government is a centralized government because the number of our practitioners is large. The government may feel pressure. So this, remember, this is back in 99 when they first outlawed it. And he says, is it difficult to teach in China? In China, there are more than 100 million who practice this. The official estimate of the number of practitioners is 60 million. I want to teach people to be good and not be involved in politics. I told people not to get involved in political events to make sure they have a very good practice in their environment without interference. And then they said, why is China, so why is the Chinese government concerned? It says, America is a country with democracy. You probably don't understand what it's like to be in a country that has a centralized government. The Chinese government knows that I am teaching, what I am teaching is good and that I am teaching people to have high moral values. They are only concerned because there are so many people practicing cultivation. Yeah. Um, so when did you learn about Qigong? Uh, I started to learn when I was four years old. I was very young and my teachers taught me the aspects that were very simple. Who were your teachers? I do not wish to have their names known. I had masters in two schools. Prior to the Cultural Revolution, people enjoyed quite a bit of religious freedom. Chinese were quite used to such things. It was like going to church in the West. And yeah, when do you start? Da, 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 da. Where were these masters? They were in the mountains. See, that's the guy, the the people that um, Buddy on Twitter alluded to. But he was like, "Oh, they're thousands of years old." <laughs> See, at least at least this guy is smart enough not to say that. At least so far. Uh, let's see. Did you feel you were in danger in China? It says the government did not express a clear position, but the security minister ministries felt there were too many people practicing. When we tried to hold meetings, they did not approve them because they felt there were too many people. And he says, what is the wheel? What is the wheel that is Falun? It is a pattern or a symbol on the surface. What is inside is much better. <laughs> the fuck is It's that? like one of those Kinder eggs that comes with like I a yes toy or a Cadbury egg. It's filled with cream. <laughs> so, so it's an idea. So in the West, the spirit is separate from the body. In the East, there are things that are very real and concrete. Hello, Deepak. <laughs> You talk says you talk about placing the wheel into the body. I can use my mind to direct and order things to happen. <laughs> uh, is cultivation achieved through mental effort or physical exercise? And it's like both. Uh, what happens after one attains the Tao? We have all heard about the Chinese deities. When one completes cultivation, one has special powers. In other words, he's basically saying you get to become Chinese God. All right. That's... Mm. How very Mormon of you. <laughs> oh, here we go. Can Qigong prevent death? In the West, one can reach paradise through cultivation and practice after death. In the East, one can achieve a divine status through cultivation practice while one is still alive. So it's kind of racist because he's basically saying only Chinese people get to be gods. Yeah, that's like excluding it, literally a bunch of other like people yep. of color. 
and such. But yeah, that's. I think he's just like making up nonsense half the time in this yeah. interview, like off the top of his head. It's like totally. It, it's like those are all certainly words. <laughs> it says you talk about the period at the end of Dharma, which I read about, and he says, "Well, the well Buddha Sakyamuni, which is the one in." 563 BC was teaching his dharma there were writings written there was no written language so the dharma was passed by word of mouth after 500 years human discourse changed the buddha sakayamuni's original words and it came to an end the ending of the dharma means the cultivation method began to become chaotic and could no longer enable people to practice cultivation and he says why does chaos reign now of course, there is not just one cause. The biggest cause of society's change today is that people no longer believe in orthodox religion. They go to church, but no longer believe in God. They feel free to do anything. The second reason is that since the beginning of the century, aliens have begun to invade the human mind and its ideology and culture. <laughs> so we're going to blame it on us atheists and the aliens. Oh, so he made it up. That doesn't sound like an allegory for anything in Buddhism. That sounds like yeah. he's talking about literal well, aliens. Here we go. Yep, here we go. Where do they come from? The aliens come from other planets. The names that I use for these planets are different. Some are from dimensions that human beings have not yet discovered. The key is how they have corrupted mankind. Everyone I know from that, from the beginning until now, has never been. There has never been a development of culture like today. Although it has been several thousand years, it has never been like now. The aliens have introduced modern machinery like computers and airplanes. <laughs> they started teaching mankind about modern science so people believe more and more science. And, spiritual and spiritually, they are controlled. Everyone thinks the scientists invent their on their own when in fact their inspiration is manipulated by the aliens in terms of culture and spirit they already control man mankind cannot live without science the ultimate purpose is to replace humans if cloning human beings succeeds the aliens can officially replace humans well how, no if you're cloning them you're making more you're not replacing them <laughs> Why does it? Why does a corpse lie dead, even though it is the same as a living body? Uh, the difference is the soul, where which is the life of the body. If people reproduce human a human person, the gods in heaven will not give the body a human soul. The aliens will take that opportunity to replace the human soul. By doing so, they will enter Earth and become Earthlings. Then when such people grow up, they will help replace humans with aliens. They will produce more and more clones. There will no longer be humans reproduced. There will no longer be humans reproduced by humans. They will act like humans, but they will introduce legislation to stop human reproduction. Oh, oh, you think that was good? I know Beth's like, ah. next question. Are you a human being? And he says, you can think of me as a human being. Are you from Earth? I don't wish to talk about myself at a higher level. People wouldn't understand it. <laughs> no, we probably wouldn't. He's uh, probably right about that. What, what I, are the I have papers to prove that I'm crazy. At least that guy. Um. But what I don't understand is, so here's some dude who in 1992 came up with this bullshit, okay? Yep. Like, you can throw Joseph Smith in there, you can throw L. Ron Hubbard in there, you can throw any founder of any religion in there you would like in the past, oh, 2,000 years. How in the fuck... Can anyone rightfully say, I follow this guy, I believe him? I don't He's know. Not. Okay, that's I mean, better. I mean, we got a little bit left here. <laughs> but we're, it, it, we're all aliens from here on out. <laughs> so, what are the aliens after? 
The aliens use many methods to keep people from freeing themselves from manipu manipulation. They make Earthlings have wars and conflicts and develop weapons using science, which makes mankind more dependent on advanced science and technology. In this way, the aliens will be able to introduce their stuff and make the preparations for replacing human beings. The military industry leads other industries such as computers and electronics. But what is the alien purpose? Well, the human body is the most perfect in the universe. Fuck no. Uh, <laughs> it is the most perfect form. The aliens want the human body. <laughs> they can have oh, my body, my body. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll be a brain in a vat. I don't care. Yep. <laughs> my fucking body. It needs replaced anyways. So what do the aliens look like? Well, some look similar to human beings. U.S. technology has already detected some aliens. The difference between aliens can be quite enormous. He didn't answer the question. Yeah. Um, can you describe it? You don't want to have that kind of thought in your mind. Describe them anyway. Well, one type looks like a human, but has a nose that is made of bone. Others look like ghosts. At first, they thought I was trying to help them. Now they know I am sweeping them away. And the last question, how do you see the future? Future human society is quite terrifying. If aliens are not to replace human beings, society will destroy itself on its own. So we're fucked either way. <laughs> Industry is creating invisible air pollution. The microparticles in the air harm human beings. The abnormality in the climate today is caused by, by pollution, and it cannot be remedied by humans alone. The drinking water is polluted. No matter how we try to purify it, it cannot return to its original purity. Modern science cannot determine the extent of the damage. The food we eat is the product of fertilized soil. The meat we eat is affected. I can foresee a future when the human limbs become deformed. The body's joints won't move and internal organs will become dysfunctional. Modern science hasn't realized this yet. At the beginning, I asked you asked why I did such things. I only tell practitioners, but not the public because they cannot comprehend it. I am trying to save the, those people who can return to a high level and a high moral level. Modern science does not understand this, so governments can do nothing. The only person in the entire world who knows this is myself alone. I am not against the public knowing it, but I am teaching practitioners. Even though the public knows it, it cannot do anything about it. People can't free themselves from science and from their concepts. I am against science. I'm not against science. I am only telling mankind the truth. I drive a car. I also live in the environment. Don't believe that I am against science. But I know that modern science is destroying mankind. Aliens have already constructed a layer of cells in human beings. The development of computers dictates this layer of body cells to control humans, human culture, and spirituality, and in the end, to replace human beings. <laughs> I'm not against science that I like, but I'm against other science. Yeah. And you got to blame right. science in there, right? And the aliens and the... Who that, want my that, body. That what is your comedy gold? How can anyone that was, right mind... How can a reporter not jump off a bridge? I don't know. <laughs> um, it was a, a fellow by the name of William Dowell. You. Well, William Dowell, I hope you drank heavily after that. <laughs> I'll have to look up what became of him, because this was in 99, so. <laughs> Damn. I I'd be curious of another, uh, if there was a more recent interview with him to see if, and the same questions being asked. I doubt it. Yeah, you know, or so, you know, to see if there's any change in what he <clears throat> espouses. Yeah. I, I find it baffling, and this goes to all religions, really, is how well I know how, but how people, when they get to a point of understanding that this is bullshit, still believe in it. 
beats the hell out of me. And and he, I got to a point where it was like, um, no, the arc doesn't make sense. No, the creation narrative doesn't make sense. No, I mean the the the, the various narratives in the Bible just stop making sense to me and regardless of the doctrinal differences which started it all for me i got to a point where i could no longer believe in it and when i looked at other religions i ran into the same problem they had these asinine beliefs that yeah. i could accept but yet there there's people that accept and, and not just you know in full on gong but in any accept these these narratives as being being the truth and it's like how how the cognitive dissonance is just it's mind blowing and, and not just, you know, within Fulan Gong, within all religion. I just don't get it. It's bizarre. Now I did I just Googled and apparently there was an interview with him in two thousand four. But um yeah, it says this is the first interview Mr. Lee has granted to media since 1999. But it was a an interview. Well, yeah, this is a Fong Gong website, so uh, so it's like just a puff piece. I'm thinking, yeah. like it's it's not. See, the other article was very nicely like question answer question answer. So it was really easy to skim through for the shit that I was looking for, but mm -hmm. this is just paragraphs. So yeah, it doesn't oh, does it even say? No. Um, uh, it just says an exclusive interview with Mr. Li Hongshu, founder of Falun Gong, aired globally at 9 p.m on New Tang Dynasty Television. This is the first interview he granted since 99. When being asked why he agreed to an interview, he said, New Tang Dynasty TV is different because they dare to report the truth. In other words, they're skewed in my favor. Um, yeah, puppies. They dare to expose things, particularly when it comes to Falun Gong being persecuted. They dare to boldly report things, he added, and it doesn't have any political leanings. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, it's just saying he's kept a low profile. Oh, and now, in 2004, he said, when being asked what the reason is the Chinese government suppressed Falun Gong, Mr. Li said it was, in fact, jealousy, and is exactly that jealousy that brought on the persecution. When you're in the context of the Chinese Communist Party's political regime, they won't allow you to have so many people, to have so many from the masses believing in such a, such something such as Falun Gong. He doesn't care about the suffering of the people, so he couldn't tolerate it. So many people were taking up Falun Gong despite the fact that it was good for society and despite the fact that it was good for the people, all he could see was his own political power. I guess referring to the leader at the time. So it doesn't actually have the interview. He's basically just saying, hey, there was an interview and here's a couple highlights. So. Yeah. It, I just find it, I mean, of course, when you throw in the communist regime of the, of the Chinese government, it kind of throws a, it puts a different spin on, on the matter as far as the persecution happening to Fulong Gong and, you know, now with uh, the uh, some of the Muslims up there, it's like I I was uh, looking through my my feed earlier when I woke up and, and you know one of the article basically was you know they're considering being Islamic a mental illness and yeah. while I jokingly say you know being religious could be. I mean, there have been arguments for and against, and I'm kind of stuck in the middle because in some ways I find it offensive for those of us to, that do have a mental illness to say, oh, well, religion is a mental illness. Yeah. I can see the, the state propaganda coming out in, in some of the positions, you know, the, the, the government has over there. But then again, I, I'm kind of like, well, okay. 
it's their country and they say X is wrong. So if you do X, you're going to get punished for it. Even though, so it's kind of like, okay, yeah, here in the United States, for our government to say that, it would be problematic because it goes against our constitution. It's like, you don't know where to draw that line because it's like, I mean, you know, if you go full on uh, from a humanistic standpoint, it's wrong. Yeah. And it's like, but then you get into the, if you do full on gong, it's not just something as simple as, you know, Tai Chi on steroids. There's some really goof ass beliefs in this system that yeah. maybe not to yeah. a society as a whole and are dangerous. The, but to the, the biggest the- issue is, is discouraging people from getting proper medical treatment. Yeah, for me that that that's a humongo issue. Issue. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, I'm surprised we don't hear more about that. Like, there's a number of stories um, coming out of Scientology, for instance, people who um, either were were forbidden or decided not to take their psych meds, and then have gone on to assault people and even kill people. So. Well, I, I think part of the part of the reason we don't hear as much uh, about it here in the states specifically is that, regretfully, our academic medicine, um, I'll use the Mayo Clinic and the Cleveland Clinic as examples, have um, taken hold of what's called integrative medicine, which is fucking mm-hmm. funk. Basically, they are instituting that homeopathy or chiropractic or any, you know, certain forms of alternative medicine work. So you have, you know, a a clinic like Cleveland Clinic or the Mayo who are are bullshit. So, of course, our, quote, mainstream media, you know, for lack of a better term, is, is not going to see the dangers of, you know, Fulan Gong advising or even Scientology for us here in the States, you know, espousing for going your medicine because according to, you know, Cleveland Clinic, hey, that's great. <laughs> I mean, oh, uh, sorry, finish up. No, I was going to say, uh, there, Mr. Lee Hong Shu has his own website too. It's Mr. Lee Hong Le, as in Lee Hong Zhu. So, um, nothing too earth shattering there. It's got a, the homepage has an FAQ. Which again, nothing to earth shattering there. But the one thing it does have, it's the question is, um, uh, what is Lee's response to the suppression in China? Because you'd asked about that, right? Um, it just be- says, Mr. Lee originally called for dialogue with Chinese authorities, believing them to be acting on a mistaken perception that Falun Gong threatened their power. China's rulers refused and issued an arrest warrant for Li. Soon after it was reported, they sent assassins to the U.S. Li has since then suggested that students try to expose human rights abuses against Falun Gong to fellow citizens and combat official propaganda with grassroots informational efforts. Assassins, I guess. Hmm. I would not put that too far above board. I could I could see that as being, yeah. pretty. but again, I, I think it goes back to a point that that Morgan make made that. What do we really 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 know? I mean, that's just it. It's so hard. I mean, like now, what they believe, like that's right from the horse's mouth. Like all that alien shit, that is right from the horse's mouth. But as far as the other stuff, I mean, as I say, on the, the Falun Gong website, um, falunandafa.org, you can actually download most of their publications. So if you're really keen to get the nitty gritty, you can totally go there and download stuff and read it. So there's that. But in general, yeah, there's there's... 
the Falun Gong stuff is total propaganda and the other stuff is total propaganda. So it's yeah. pretty tough to get a balanced opinion. Um, but uh, we've run out of time. But Sorry? if we go by their own writings, they're pretty Yeah, at least, at least as far as the beliefs go, yes, I agree. But as to what's going on in China and how persecuted people are, that's that's hard to tell. Yeah. Well, I think it comes down, basically comes down to this uh, for me, is that I don't really give a crap what you believe, but if you still start espousing it publicly and saying, hey, you need to stop taking your meds or, yes. you know, doing something that is hurtful to even one individual or a society, then I'm going to have problems with you. But on an individual level, I don't care. And yeah. governments on a whole, whether it's my government here in the U.S. or abroad, you got to treat people with, with respect, with dignity, yeah. with humanity. I mean, it's just persecuting if somebody. If they want to do their exercises in the park, I don't give a shit. Let yeah, let them. You know, but it, oh. if they're harming harming other people, yeah. So, anyway, well, um, thank you, ladies. Uh, we I learned a few things. Even um, Morgan dug up the alien angle. I hadn't found that before. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Gotta be one yeah. there. That was some comedy. Always find the aliens. Yeah, it's aliens. Yeah, I need that that guy's hair. Be like it's aliens. <laughs> Um, aliens. No. All right. Well, uh, Beth, where do we find you? Easy Sway is on Twitter, Dune Triple Nine Eight. That connects to uh, uh, no, it doesn't connect to Facebook anymore. That connects to uh, uh, my blog, Havoc and Chaos, which does connect to Facebook, and that's under Beth A. Hambridge. If you send me a friend request, put that uh, if you can. I don't know. Allowed to do that, but in relation to the show, or I most likely will ignore you. All right, thank you. And Morgan, where do we find you? All right, we can find me on that episode of Kevin and Benedict where I go into um, the religion of Donald J. Trump. So that's a fun ride. Um, also, soon I will be on an upcoming episode of The Wayward Willis. And then you can catch me on my regular podcast on The Bi Skeptical with Tris Mamone. Um, on iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mo String, M O S T R I N G, and on Facebook, Morgan L. Stringer. Awesome. Well, thank you, ladies. Uh, it was a fun time. Uh, we will, of course, be back next week. Um, don't know what we'll be up to, but we'll find something equally as amusing, I'm sure. And as Matt says, the aliens are going to kill us atheists. <laughs> We'll God, be... I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. If, if they come and they ask to be taken to our leader, someone hand them a gun and send them to Washington. <laughs> or just ask them what kind of weaponry they have, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's that uh, that uh, orange guy over there. That, that that's No, him. I'll just be like, take me with you. Yeah. What what star system are you in? Oh, it doesn't matter. Can I come? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have any people like that, does it? No? Okay, I, I'm good. <laughs> As they say, beam me up, Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll be back next week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll come up with something to dazzle you with, I'm sure. And uh, until then, um, oh, <laughs> yeah, Matt says maybe they will vaporize Trump. Um, that's that's the hope. But, you know, barring that, we'll we'll be happy to go with them. So uh, until next week, um, we will see you all here and we will leave you with the human creed and see that. I know the truth and power of reason and of rational thinking and I will use them to my advantage. I know the truth and power of educating myself and of expanding my intellectual boundaries, and I will educate myself. I know the truth and power of vanquishing ignorance, and I will do so whenever the opportunity presents itself.
I know the truth and power of morality without supervision, and of true and accurate righteousness. I know the truth and power of obliterating tyranny, be it intellectual, emotional, or philosophical, and will work toward that goal whenever and however possible. I know the truth and power of human ingenuity. I know the truth and power of human compassion, and I will be mindful of the welfare of others. I know the truth and power of equality and fairness for all living things. I know the truth and power of the importance of our families, our friends, and our fellow men and women. I know the truth and power of human stewardship of our lands, our waters, and our skies, and I will try to act to preserve our environment. I know the truth and power of the sciences of mathematics, of physics, and of chemistry, and of the important role of these disciplines in understanding the workings of this cosmos. I know the truth and power of the rejection of all notions or beliefs that reside in the supernatural or the superstitious, and of those notions or beliefs that we are not supposed to be able to explain. And I know that these rejections are necessary for humankind's survival. I am a human being with a free mind, liberated from irrational influence and from unreasonable dogma.